then your children come with sin sick souls, asking their Lord to look down upon us, baptize us afresh with fire from on high, cleanse us within and without. We know, Lord, that there is nothing too hard for you to do for us. And we are mindful of the fact that burdens are lifted at Calvary. We know, dear Lord, that we can depend on you no matter what the circumstances may be. At this time, many of us may be going through very challenging times. We know, dear Lord, that these are the last days, and the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And at times, Lord, we become discouraged, disheartened, disillusioned, sometimes not knowing which way to turn or what to do. But we know that we can come to you no matter what the situation. We do not have to make an appointment. We do not have to come at a particular time. You do not have to look for a particular place because you are always there ready with outstretched arms saying, come on to me, all you are laden. All you are burdened. All you are sick, sick. All you are uh, physically sick. All you are mentally sick. All you are economically sick. All you who are spiritually sick, no matter what the circumstances are, you have the remedy. And we are grateful, dear Lord, because you are the greatest physician of all. You are the greatest surgeon of all. You are the greatest provider of all. You are the greatest counselor. And we know that you are a friend, a friend indeed. No other friend. You are also a parent. We know, Lord, that you are a God who is acquainted with grief because you gave your only son Jesus to die on the cross of Calvary. And we know, dear Lord, that we can come with our pain. We know we can come with our finances. We know we can come with our relationships. We know that we can come with our debts, whatever they may be. We know, Lord, that you have the answer. Help us to trust you as the days go by. We want to thank you for this campaign, for the young people and for what they are doing. We know, Lord, that they are not only the men and women of tomorrow, but of today. And we thank you for them, dear God, and we pray that they will continue to shine for you. We pray, dear Lord, that we as grown-ups will continue to support them. We pray, Lord, for the community in which we live. Father God, we know that there's so much going on around us. As we look around, we see the fulfillment of time. Man's hearts are becoming waxed with cold because we do not have the love of as we should have one for another. Because of this, dear Lord, there is so much human suffering, not only um, generally and geographically, but also we pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us to look up because we know that when we see these things, we know that man's redemption draws now. We think of the places, dear Lord, right now in Thailand, there is flooding. And there are other, uh, other things that are happening around us so much so that we do not know what to do or where to turn. But Lord, we know that we can come to you at any time. Father God, be with each home represented here tonight. Each heart, dear Lord. And we thank you, dear Lord, for the presenters, for those, Lord, who are trying to bring this program to us, that you will give them the wisdom and understanding, and that we as the church will continue to support them in whatever way we can. Thank you, dear Lord, for hearing us. And thank you for answering our prayer because you said that before we called, you have answered. And while we are yet speaking, you hear. You've also said, dear Lord, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And we thank you that we can take you at your word, knowing that with you all things are possible, what's impossible with man. So once again, Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We honor and magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Now let the church say, Amen. 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 Amen.
Ms. Baraka and is a student at New Boat studying his third year. He's in his third year studying theology. Good evening, church. God is good. And all the time. I really want to apologize for being extra late. I was talked by the police when I was on my right here and they took a lot of my time and I praise God I'm here. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me to, to come here and share your word now. As, as it is your custom, do what you do best. You know, I'm a sinner and I really need your grace right now. Yes. Speak to your people for they're ready to hear your beautiful and your wonderful voice. In the wonderful and precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll be speaking from the sermon title, What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? There are problems that we can solve. Problems that we can ask our family to help us solve them. Problems that you can call your friends and, they, and they, will, they, will, they will sort it out for you. But there are problems that you cannot solve. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? Now, let me just start by making it clear that when God created human beings, he created us to enjoy the abundance of life. That was God's plan for us. But in Genesis chapter 3, we fell into sin, and as a result of sin, we face some hardship, we face some trouble times, we face some trials and tri some tribulations, and we face some problems that we cannot solve. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? A problem that will make you cry so much, and after every tear has dry and you cannot cry anymore, the problem is still there, staring at you, and it is not solved. What do you do when you have that kind of a problem? A problem that will make you think so much, and, and no matter how much thinking you're putting into it, at the end of the thinking, you cannot solve these problems. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? A problem that will make you pray so much, and yet, after the prayers, you feel like God is not present at that time. I don't know if you've been into that situation. You prayed so much, and God seems to be quiet with your problems. Not solved. The problem is still there, just looking at you. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? 2007, I was invited to a wedding. My friend was getting married back home in Tanzania, and he actually told me from 2006, he said, I'm getting married, I don't need to miss my wedding. Come, it's going to be a big wedding, I want you to be there. And I was very happy, I was excited. Oh, this is a wedding, 2007, summertime, I went back home for this wedding. And I met people that I hadn't met for a long time. I met, I met people that I never thought I would meet because some of them went to India for their studies. Some of them were in the States. And, and all of them had come back for this wedding. This was supposed to be a massive wedding. I mean, I got there on Thursday, and I was told that the party had started on Wednesday. There was a barbecue from a Wednesday night, and this, this wedding was supposed to happen on a Sunday. So from a Wednesday to a Sunday, people were supposed to be just eating and drinking, eating and drinking, eating and drinking, waiting for this wedding. It was a big wedding. I was happy. Friday morning, my friend told me, you know what, let, let, let's, let's go to town. There's some few things that I need to sort out and, and we'll talk. That's when, that's, that's when we'll get time to catch up. So we're driving down and my friend is telling me about how much he loves this lady. How much he's willing to devote the rest of his life to this lady. You know when a man is in love, it's just so annoying to listen to them sometimes. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> You're not like that, man. Do you know what I mean? Just calm down. He's like, nah, man. You don't know, this woman is the one for me. I'm happy. I'm ready to spend the rest of my life with this woman. And, I, and I'm looking at him and I'm, and I'm like, you're quite, you're, you're a bit young. Are you sure you're ready for this? My guy is like, yes, I cannot see my life without this woman. My guy was very happy about this wedding. I was happy for him too. He received a phone call from his fiance in the afternoon and she said, I want to speak to you. He went to see his fiance. And I was hanging around in town waiting for him. Can I get some water from someone, please? Thank you. And um, I was hanging around in town waiting for him. About half an hour, 45 minutes later, he gives me a phone call. He's like, come pick me up from a certain place. And I drove and I went to pick him up. And, and when I got there, I realized that there was something wrong with my friend. His eyes were red. And when I'm talking about red eyes, I mean red eyes. They, they, they look like they want to cry, but he's not crying. His, his veins were popping. You can literally see his veins standing up. He, his face is just watery. My guy is sweating so much, it looks like someone has splashed water on him. His hair is turning, and, and I knew that there was something wrong with my friend. And I asked him, what's wrong with you? He said, Baraka, there are things that cannot be explained. Thank you so much, man. 
There are things that cannot be explained. And, and, and for those who know me, Glenda, Victor, I would bother you until you tell me what's wrong with you. So I trusted him. Ah, I was like, talk to me. Maybe I can help this thing. He's like, Braka, there are things that you cannot help. After, 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 after begging him, he told me for a long time, he told me, you know what, my fiance is pregnant. And I, I, and I thought for a few seconds, and I'm like, you're born and raised in the church, your dad is an elder, how could you do this? I mean, you couldn't wait for, for a few more months, for a few more weeks, what, what's, what's going on? And, and I started questioning him, what's going on, my man? You, you never used to be like that, what's not happening? And, and he said, brother, that's the problem, sometimes you talk too much. <laughs> And I'm like, so, 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 what's up? You messed up. That's your mess, bro. What's going on? He said, no, 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 no. I know I haven't done anything with this lady. She told me that a friend, a friend of mine, my best friend who was supposed to be standing right next to me on my wedding day, has made my fiance pregnant. What do you do in life as you probably tell us all? Do you know that moment when you're told something and you're quiet because you don't know what to say, you don't know what to feel? You can't even look at him. I'm like, I want to ask if the wedding is still on or off. <laughs> you ain't going to ask that question then. Because he's in a state. I'm looking at him and I don't know what to feel. And, and if you manage to shut me up, you say you must have said something big. So, so I'm just standing there. I, I can't even move. Like I, I, I want to tell him to go in the car, but I'm like, is he actually going to come in the car with me? What do you do in life and your problem cannot solve? He said, um, you know, don't tell anyone about this. Uh, I want to get some rest. I will sleep for about. I will sleep for a bit, and um, when I wake up, I will speak to my parents, and we'll see where we can move from there onwards. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I drove him home. People are still partying. People are just happy. The barbecue is going on. People are eating and drinking on a Friday afternoon. The wedding was on a Sunday, and my friend is in a state. He goes in the room. He sleeps, and I'm sitting outside his room, waiting for him to wake up so that he can speak to his parents about this problem. About one hour later, I'm like, let me go check on this guy. What, what is he doing? How can you sleep so long after you've got that news? I went into the room, and my friend is not in the room, so I asked his mom if you'd seen him. His mom says, no, I haven't seen him. I asked his dad, have you seen him? I said, no, I haven't seen him. We're asking people around, and no one has seen him. We called his fiance. His fiance is like, no, 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 I haven't seen him ever since I left him in the afternoon. His mom goes into his room and in his little study table here, the mom finds a little note saying, I cannot handle it anymore. And when you're looking, when you're looking around for him, right outside his house, like behind his house, he was hanging on a tree. Oh. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? Do you go suicidal? Is that the best solution? A problem that will make you cry. And after crying, you have not solved it. It's outside your powers. What do you do when life hands you a problem you cannot solve? See, I look at a character in the Bible, Job. Job is an interesting character for me. Um, Job is a, is a rich man. The Bible says he's a, he's a rich man. He's a very wealthy man. He's a, he's a God-fearing man. He's a good guy. He, was, he, was, he had authority in the, in, the, in, the, in the town that he lived in. He was, he was a good man. And, and one day, the, the writer says, one day um, the, de the, the angels have taken report to God and the devil went there and represented himself. God asked the devil, where are you coming from? He says, I was just running around the town. And God decides to show a job off. Have you seen my servant Job? Uh, parents, do, do you have that thing with your children? When I know when I'm preaching, when I'm preaching and, 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 and after, after my sermon, my mom is like, that's my son. <laughs> I don't know if you parents have that. Do, do you have that with your children? You sort of are so excited and, and so proud of your children, you're, you're sort of showing them aim off. And that's what God is actually doing. This is all I see God doing. He's like, devil, have you seen my servant, Job? What would God say about you today? Would he say, would he ask the same question about you? Have you seen my servant, Captain? Is God taking pride in you? Actually, let's go back. Is it possible for God to take pride in you? Oh, yes. Is he taking pride in you? The devil says, yeah, I've seen him. But, you know, he is not worshipping you. And he's not faithful to you because he's, he's actually a good guy. No, 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 no. He's actually faithful because you've blessed him and everything is going well with him. That's why he's faithful. And God is very sure about Job. 
And they're like, you know what? Do whatever you're going to do, but do not touch his life. And the devil starts playing around with Job's life. And he gets four messengers in the same day. One, you, 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 your servants were taking care of Carmel's, and, and as they're taking care of Carmel's, they, they were attacked, and, 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 and all the Carmel's have been taken, and your servants have been slain. Off. Here I am, left to bring you the message. And, and, and just before this, this first servant car finishes the second servant's that your oxen, your oxen were working in the farms, and, and as they were working in the farm, we were attacked, and, and they were taken away, and, 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 and all your servants were killed. Here I am, left to bring you a message. Another, before this one finishes, another servant comes in, and this is a big one for me. And it's like, you know, your children were enjoying and partying in their bro older brother's house, and as they were having party, and they were enjoying, the four walls of the house fell on them, and they all died, everyone in the house died. Here I am, left to bring you a message. What do you do when life finds you a problem? You're not John cannot resurrect his children. His children are dead. There is no way you bring his children back. There are ten children. Seven men, three girls. Dead. What do you do? What do you do when life finds your brother you cannot solve? One of my lecturers was standing nearby a lady in Reading who lost uh, her two sons in a car accident. And for 14 years, she went to the graveyards. 14 years, every single day, she went to the graveyards. What do you do? What do you do when life finds your brother you cannot solve? And, and, and as if that's not enough. Job's house has been touched. The Bible says that Job now has got boils all over his skin. Job cannot move. Job is in pain. Job is smelling. You know what boils are. You get one boil and it smells so bad you even hate your own self. Now Job has got boils all over his skin. Now you've lost all your wealth. You, you've lost all your respect. Then, 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 then your skin, your own body is denying you. What do you do when life finds you a problem you cannot solve? And Job is sitting there, his friends come, and they're like, you know, you know what, Job? It's not actually, it's not even worth it serving this, this God of yours. It's not worth it. Just, just allow it. Leave him, and let me just drop a little word here. Be, be, be careful when you're choosing your friends. Be careful who you're choosing when you're choosing your friends. Are, are your friends really uplifting you, or are they taking you low? See, 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 when, when, I'm in, when I'm in my hard times, even though you cannot help me, I would expect you to come and, 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 and sing a song for me. Say a little prayer for me. Read, read some psalm for me. Encourage me. But, but his friends are like, John, it's not worth it saving your God. He, his own wife. Hello, somebody. His own wife. He's like, John, you better cast God and die. Cast God and die. Now, that's his wife. Can I speak to the wives in here? I'm not married. I'm nowhere near being married. But can I speak to the wives in here? What, what, what do you tell your husbands? What do, you tell, do you blame them? Do you encourage them when they're going through hardships? Are, are you there by their side? Or do you tell them to cast God and die? Encourage your husbands. Job's wife is like, cast God and die. So, so now, Job has lost all his wealth, all the authority, all his friends. They're like, it's not worth hanging around with him. His wife is against him, and his own body has denied him. What do you do when life comes to a problem you cannot solve? Job is, a, is on a very low point, and this is what Job says. Now, this blows my mind. Job chapter 1, verse 21. Job chapter 1, verse 21. This is what Job says. Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Guys, did, did you just hear what I read? You, you've lost your wife, you've lost your friends, your children, you've lost your wealth, you've lost your authority, you know your wife is against you, your own body, you cannot even move your own body, you smell, and, and here you are, the Lord gave and the Lord taketh, blessed be the name of the Lord. How do you bless the name of the Lord when you're facing a problem that you cannot solve? How do you sing, I love you Lord, and I lift my hands to worship you when your children have died? How do you do that? How do you do that? 
How, how, how do you say, God, you are the best friend I've ever had, and I love you, Lord. You are the best that I've ever experienced when, when your own wife has died. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you say, Lord, what's another praise song? I lift your name on high, and I want to sing your praises when, when your business has collapsed, and you're just about to lose your mortgage. How do you do that? What, how do you praise the name of the Lord when you're in a hardship? Now, now, the only way this makes sense to me is when I make it into a mathematical formula. Amen. That's the only way it makes sense. Because otherwise, it does not make sense. Can I get free people? Can I get free people? If you don't know I'm going to pick you. There you go. My man, There you go, Three people. Now let's make this thing into a mathematical formula because this is the only way it will make sense. The only way you can sing, I love you, Lord, and I praise your name when your children are dying in you, this is how you have to do it. Give. That's give. That's take. Blessed be the name of the Lord, alright? The Lord gave plus the Lord has taken away equals blessed be the name of the Lord. That's how you have to view it. So, 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 so when God gives, you have to praise him. Worship him. Lift your hands, sing, because the Lord has given. Plus, the Lord has taken away. Because he gave, and he has taken, you still have to worship him. If you worship him when he gave, why wouldn't you worship him when he's taken away? Because, blessed be the name of the Lord. But if you get so much caught up in him giving, if you get so much caught up in him giving, you forget to bless his name. Because there's so much in him giving. And the same, if you get so much caught up in him taking away, you forget him and you curse him. Because there's so much in him taking away. But if you remember the mathematical formula, the Lord gave plus the Lord has taken away equals blessed be the name of the Lord, you will be able to praise God. Because it really takes away. You remember, he's the one that gave. And now he's taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we together? Amen. That's, that's what makes sense. <laughs> if, if you break this formula, if, if you put give away, and all you have is taken, you cannot bless the name of the Lord. Because you do not remember the beauty of him giving. The Lord gave. The Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is part one. This is part two of this sermon. What do you do when life has hands your problem you cannot solve? Part one, when life has your problem you cannot solve, remember, the Lord gave. The same Lord that gave, he has taken away. Therefore, bless the name of the Lord. When life has you a problem you cannot solve, bless his name. And a sign of Christian maturity, a sign of Christian maturity is being able to bless the name of the Lord. When you're facing some problems, God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
just to remind you all that um, we will not be having a meeting tomorrow. So we shall see each other again on Wednesday. And I'd just like to recognize the viewers online. Thank you very, very much for joining us. It was worth the wait. Thank you, Baraka. And I pray that you've all been blessed by this evening. And please come again on Wednesday. And please remember to invite your friends and even the strangers. Thank you very much for coming. Um, just quickly.